All right, welcome back. We're gonna be looking at some examples for calculating the average annual rate of return. And we'll start with this one right here, where we're asked to find the average annual rate of return for the Microsoft stock from 2009 to 2012 using the table below. And if you're curious, I'll have the source of this data here in the description of this video. All right, so then to do this example, the first thing we're going to do is look at the amount of years that we're covering here. In this example, we've got four different years. We've got 2009, 2010, 2011, and 2012, each with their own rates, right? Some are negative and some are positive, but it doesn't matter. We can still find the average annual rate no matter how big or how small these rates are. So what we're asking when we wanna know what the average annual rate of return is, is if this was an account where we were earning the same rate every year, what would that rate be to give the same growth or decay that these four rates would give you in this four year period, right? If I invested something in 2009 and then it's worth a different amount in 2012, what would be that average rate that I'd have for each year, which would be the same as having all these different rates for that four year period? So we're looking for an average rate over a four year period. So we'll start by writing this one plus i to the fourth power because we're looking for an interest rate over a four year period. That would be the same. We're looking for an average annual rate. And so then we'll take each of our yearly rates and we'll multiply them together while also adding one to them. So we'll have one plus 0.5679 times one plus negative 0.0843. We're just taking these rates and turning them into their decimal forms. And then we'll have that multiplied by one plus negative 0.0699 times one plus 0 0.0289. And so then if we simplify that, we'll have one plus i to the fourth power equal to 1.5679 times one plus this negative rate. So in this case, this is actually going to be 0 0.9157 and then we're gonna be multiplied by 0 0.9301. And then we'll have an easy one of 1.0289. So that would be just adding one to each of these rates. So then if we were to multiply all these rates together, we're gonna to have one plus i to the fourth power is equal to 1.37396, and that would keep on going. Got a lot of decimals there. Then we just have to take the fourth root of each side. So that's what we'll do. We'll have one plus i is equal to 1.3739. And I'm gonna stop writing the decimals there and take this to the 1 4th power, which would be the same as taking the fourth root. And then we would find that one plus i is equal to 1.0827. And then if we were to subtract one from each side, we would get that i is equal to 0.0827 or 8.27%. And so that would be our answer in this case, which would be our average annual rate of return for this four year period for this Microsoft stock. So even though in 2009, we had a 56% rate, all these smaller rates really brought it down over the four years to just an average of 8.27%. And all that means is if this four year period had one rate that was consistent for all four years, it would be this rate and we would have the same amount of growth over this period. Even though we had different interest rates before, this one is the average of them and would give us the same amount in that four year period. All right, so for our second example, we're gonna look at this problem here. We have that Arnold receives interest on an account that he made a deposit in. For the first three years, he receives 4% interest compounded yearly. For the next two years, he receives 6% interest compounded yearly and for the last five years, he receives 9% interest compounded yearly. What was his average annual rate of return over the 10 year period? So throughout that problem, we were given a lot of different interest rates. So let's start by organizing them and writing down what we know. So we'll start with the first three years that they tell us about. So for the first three years, he received an interest rate of 4% compounded yearly. So that was 4%, and that in decimal form would be 0 0.04. Then for the next two years, he received 6% interest compounded yearly. So then we'll make a note of that. So then for the next two years, he received 6%, and that in decimal form is 0 0.06. And then we'll look at those last five years that they told us about. 
for the last five years, he received 9% interest compounded yearly. So then we'll take note of that and we'll write that for five years, he received 9% compounded interest, which in decimal format is 0.09. So now what's our next step? Well, we know that we are interested in finding an average annual rate of return for a 10 year period. We have three years here, two years here, so that's five years so far, and then another five years, so a total of 10 years. And so because we know that, we can start by writing our equation with that one plus i quantity to the 10th power. And we can set that equal to our interest rates, which we're going to work with next. But to quickly just remind you what this is, this is representing an average interest rate for that 10 year period that would be equivalent to having all these different rates over that 10 year period. Again, that would be an average rate. And so like we did before, we took each of our different rates and we multiplied them together while adding them to one, and then we solved for i. And so we could do that here. We could do each year individually, right? I could write 1.04, which would be one plus the interest rate for the first three years. So I would have to do that three more times actually. And then I could go into the next two years and write 1.06 and do that again. And then I could do five years of this 9% interest rate, but that's a little lengthy. I don't actually need to do that. We can actually use an algebra trick to do this quicker by just combining these quantities and giving them an exponent. So what I mean by that is we can get rid of this and then we can write to the third power because this is going to happen for three years. We're gonna be using this interest rate of 4% where Arnold is receiving that interest of 4% for three years. So we just take this quantity to the third power. And then we can do the same thing for that 6% interest rate. We'll take that to the second power because that is taking place for two years. And then finally, we have our last five years where we have a 9% interest rate. And so we'll have 1.09 and take that to the fifth power for those five years that we have that interest rate. So then we can simplify all of this. In fact, I'm going to write that up here. We can simplify this to one plus i to the 10th power. And this is going to be equal to, if we were to plug in all of this into our calculator, we would get the value of 1.9 four, six, and some more decimals that I'm just going to leave out. And then in order to solve for i, we'll have to take the 10th root of both sides because we have this 10th power here, we have to cancel that out. So we'll take a 10th root, which would be the same as taking both sides to the 1 10th power. And we'll be left with one plus i is equal to 1.0688. And then if we subtracted this one from both sides, we will be left with i equal to 0.0688, which is the same as 6.88%. And so that would be our answer to this problem. This is Arnold's average annual rate of return for that 10 year period where he had all these different interest rates. So this rate right here would give him the same accumulation in his account over that 10 year period as these three different rates did for that same amount of time. So hopefully that made sense. The process of finding the average annual rate of return is really not too difficult. It's more so just figuring out what your rates are and then how to set them up in this equation, which is pretty intuitive once you see it. All right, so those are all the examples I had for calculating the average annual rate of return. If you still have some questions, feel free to leave those in the comments, but that's all I have for now. So I will see you next time.